Well, happy Eclipse Day. What an unusual day this is for us on the 8th of April, 2024. I know it's a day that's going to go down in our memories for a long time. This is Lunch and Learn with our Chief Inspector for the State, Mr. Tony Woodard, and myself, Tom Hunt, with the Arkansas HBAC Art Association. You may notice there that we're drawing some attention to what's going on today across the country. Everybody's all excited about the eclipse, and I know you are too. Uh, the end. Of, yeah, our program is starting right now. It'll be over well before twelve thirty, and we don't see anything really happen in this area till about twelve thirty-three, and that's just a very slow entry into what's going to take place. And I guess the peak's going to be there around one fifty or something like that. And the reason we have the name Russellville up there because they're kind of featured with NASA these days. Lots of folks can take. Tony, welcome to Lunch and Learn for April the 8th. Well, glad to be here. <laughs> uh, here is a typical inspection. This was one that actually it came before the board, didn't it? This is one that came before the board, and it's, uh, it brings up the question the board members posed. In fact, they uh, tabled this one. We'd, in, in, in my time doing this, we'd never had that happen before. And the contractor that was sworn in, he uh, he was making statements, and they would refer to me in my 37 years, and I, I just flat said, well, contractors got to know as, as a professional, when you take on a job and you clearly know we got a mix-match system, and that, that old Addy's saying, I know that you and I have been doing expos, and we hear it all the time. Well, Mr. Inspector, I don't understand. This thing's worked 20 years this way, you yeah. know? And the contractor has to be the professional to inform them that I understand that's 20 years, but the equipment of today doesn't work that way. And uh, you've got to know going in, if I'm going to set a new package unit on a system that doesn't meet any, I mean, I think what you have to do is try to find a code violation that is correct in this situation. And and one like that, I, you know, I, I try to explain to the contractors, get a documentation of acknowledgement, knowing that... They know I can't afford it. All I can do is afford this, Mr. Contractor. I can't afford a duct system. I relieve you of responsibility because it doesn't meet code and move forward. But in this situation, this contractor, he just he he had the opportunity to make it right and he just refused to. So it well, was there are several things that we're going to look at. First off, the platform that it was sitting on. When you go around to the other side, it looks to me like that middle platform is sort of hanging off of and sloped away from a piece of concrete that was already there. That's correct. And the pad is that the three inch pad is a pad. And that's actually, if you go into the commentary, look at that's three inches all the way around. So you're a three inch high pad and you've got three inches of coverage all the way around package unit so that it don't dip and lean at, at the uh, other end. So that's not, yeah, that that's just the beginning of the code violations and, there's several in that picture, and I know you, you and I condense these down as quick as we can. And as you scroll through, we'll kind of go through a few of them. <laughs> I'm just trying to think in terms of a good old boy out there trying to sell a system and get it installed and collect and move on down the road. Why you would think that this was a cool thing to do, to take that metal platform and put it on top of a piece of concrete. I don't... I, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I also have a lot of a, of, of ep empathy for a guy who's out there working and struggling and, and sweating. Yet they don't stop and think. They just let stuff like this slide. I, I don't understand it. Now, you look on the other side of it and you see again how it's hanging off of there. And I guess that was the question I just asked. Is that not just hanging off that piece yeah, of concrete? It, it is the, the structural metal, you know, that's from the factory. That's the way they make it because these are these are defined RTUs, even though we set them in package units and a lot of they're a rooftop unit, you know, and then you can go down floor horizontal. Sometimes we set them on the ground and that's designed for the forklift application to lift it or mount it down on a curb. But then you have to support that, like you said, all the way around. So, yes, that, that is not good. And also in that picture, I think the next slide we might get to it. I'm not sure. Uh, but if we don't get to it, I want to point out right here, if this duck, okay, like on the supply side, so if that square duck's continuing on and going 
you're meeting a minimum requirement of three foot of a plenum. Now, this is an extended plenum because it's going on up and going in. Same goes for the return. If you don't do a extended plenum all the way up, you have a minimum depth of two foot. If and that they they were missing that. Now, this was several violations as well. We got the panel that you access the appliance block. Uh, he didn't put a sediment trap, which this instructions did call and the fuel gas code calls for. And, but the picture here is showing the location ducts not being installed in the weather, which is correct. Uh, they're just wide open to the atmosphere out there. And uh, uh, if, we look at, if we look at that, Tony, 603.14 talks about it's like the next step after we have a placement for the unit itself. The unit's got to be three inches above grade, but the duct's got to be four inches above grade. Am I reading that correctly? Yes, sir. You sure are. So again, <laughs> an, old, an old change out. If you see that, you know, inform the consumer, look, your ducts can rust. I see they're starting to rust. Do you want us to adjust this, dig this out, adjust it, raise the duct up, get acknowledgement from the consumer. Uh, and that brings the point up that if this was a furnace and a flu vent, you don't get the grace period of acknowledge. If the flu vent's got a hole in it, that's a life safety. You're going to be responsible for that part, something like that. But this right here, this is just the right thing to do to tell them, look, you're resting in the earth. It's going to rust. It's a bad situation. But, I, you know, 98% of our contractors are legit. They want to do it right. And they do it. We just have some bad players out there, and that's why the board exists. Well, you you brought up an interesting topic there because there's always the questions about does this apply to new construction or does it also apply to retrofit? And if I just heard you correctly, that as long as it's not a health and safety issue, a life issue, that if they're going into a retrofit, they can tie into a mess as long as I get a statement from the homeowner that says, I understand it's a mess, but I can't afford to fix it. They got it right. You've got to have proof of acknowledgement due to economic strengths that I just, look, I just can't afford that, but I understand. And I've you've clearly acknowledged to me that maybe my breathing zone isn't the best. Maybe my ducks aren't where they're supposed to be. Yes, you get that acknowledgement. And then we're the state side, as far as governing the license, we're out. Well, now, another question I had on this same view is uh, that flex gas line. Tell me about that. Okay, so a point was brought up at the expo up in the Northwest, which is a very good question, a great question. Are there inside and outside connectors? And the, the answer is simply yes, there are. There are uh, gas flex connectors approved for interior use only and exterior use, and you get all that information off that missing off of this one. Uh, majority of the exterior are yellow or black or heavy gray, uh, but mainly the interior are very shiny, shiny, almost look like stainless steel type uh, areas. And there are the fuel gas code. I'm glad you put it there. Those, new, those are new codes that require that now right below. It, it, very few pieces of equipment have built-in sediment collecting devices. There are a few on the higher end, but very few do, and that is a requirement to ensure uh, you get a sediment trap installed in there when you stall. Now, I understand a, a heat and air man listening or a guy must not say, well, I'm not a licensed plumber. That's why your license allows you to do six foot. So from that gas valve, you have a six foot area that you can legally run unions, cut and, cut and die and install that, that trap with a T, sediment trap as well. And uh, if you'll go back and pay attention to your installation instructions, just about all your fuel fired appliances are requiring that. And there's the code reference that requires it now as well, the 408.4. We used uh, to think we used to think about that time strictly as drips. And when we had vertical gas pipe coming down three foot or more, then we'd put a T and collect it. Now that's changed. They've actually changed it from drip. We do have a drip. Now we have a sediment trap as well. Hmm. Well, it's not the same world we lived in 20 years. No, Interesting that it says exposed duct must be protected. Yes, that's the location. Here is the weather. So this was one of the code violations. And when the gentleman was sworn in, he he I went back and paid attention to the wording, and he did not ever use the word I insulated that duct. His wording was I lined that duct. 
Like you, you would think that, and we we made sure that the supply was lined internally. The return, you could tap on it, do it, and uh, I backed my inspector. I said, uh, "No, that's not insulated, Doug." He told the board it was. The board tabled it and said, Chief, you're going to go up there tomorrow and you're going to take that duck apart. And I said, okay, boy. <laughs> so the things that took place, wow. It's a and that comes up in our next slide. But while we're still on this one, when we're talking about uh, protecting it against the weather, we're looking right. at a piece of... Okay, so... So, like, the, the metal itself, if you're going to go with flat metal... You have there's there's galvalume coating, galvanized coating on that. So it's G60 is for exterior interior. G90, if you use a G90 metal and you actually do a mastic sealing of the S and drives, like you see that coloration there, they changed this because a lot of the old paint on mastic did not meet the weatherization requirement of this new code here. Uh, the, the 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 hard cast mastic tape that you squeegee down, it does meet it. There are a couple more products that meet it, but you have to seal it. So this round pipe would 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 have required, of course, that's not, you know, if that was G90, then you could have sealed that, but it's got to be insulated. Now, this pipe has to have the insulation and the weatherization as well. So what you see a lot of the commercial jobs, you'll see a cover duct, and you won't even see the two duct. You'll see just a cover duct built over that, and that would be part of the weatherization protection as well. Well, the next thing on this same picture is it, it looks like they got up there with a sawzall and started cutting the hole and then stuck the round pipe through it. Comes pretty pretty clear about you got to seal that up. You got to seal that up. You 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 you. That's rodent proofing. That's structural integrity. And depending on what was cut on the inside of that, which if it's trusses or something, now you've done structural damage. So yes, there you have to protect that part of that and seal that up to stop birds, rats, mice, anything from getting up in there. Uh, again, another cover duck. You could have sealed that and protected all that with the cover duck as well. You uh, you you ever have squirrels in your attic? That's a good yes. thing. <laughs> Raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> and I can assure you, if you've ever had a varmint in your attic, that's the last thing you want to have in your attic. <laughs> Okay. The duct lining and the coverings. Yes, this was actually once we took it apart, which I would have. I'm gonna tell you what. I'd have, I'd have laid a Benjamin Franklin down there that day before I opened that, and I'd have lost that hundred dollars immediately because I would have said no way that was it lined, and it was. They had literally unsnapped the duct pot, him the hemlock, and glued this bubble wrap material on all the joints. He didn't do the wide, I mean, the elbows. And you can, if you pay attention into your, you've got your presentation topped in there, but you're seeing that one screw and that that big 14 inch duck, it only had two screws in it anyway. Uh, no sealing of the thing together, had that lining, but this lining, we have these new ASTM numbers you're seeing now. And all of us were trained on the OASTM 84 before but now we've got this one, and there's another one, the 411C you see in there, due to smoldering and uh, breathing in the air zone. So now he's put this into the, not just breathing outside, now he's put this chemical in there that's being breathed, which is harmful. Uh, yeah, that's not a good situation. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw this in just so I can prove that I've listened to you in the past. Yes, and sir. as you were talking about the two screws, it's got to have at least three evenly spaced as much as it can be. And if you use what's supposed to be good practice, you take the diameter divided by two, and that's the number of screws you use. Of course, nobody does that. Right. And I'm sorry, but if you're still just putting three screws in a 14-inch pipe, I want to talk to you. <laughs> Please do not. We we had the lunch and lunch. I'm sorry. We had the Expo in Little Rock, and I had a contractor. I'm not going to mention his name. He probably wouldn't be upset if I did, but... He called me the first thing the next morning and said, Mr. Woodard, I did not sleep a wink last night after what we discussed. On what I said, you know, I, I've been there. I said, and uh, that's where the gray and the wrinkles come from. But I said, that that's your character, and that's a good thing. And, uh, you know, we we go back, we make our corrections, do the best we can, and, and, and sure. And, you know, after conversing with him and all that, it wasn't as bad as, he, you know, his mind snowballed into thinking it was something, but – but yeah, I mean, 
I'm proud what we're doing is working. And just just the people with the questions they ask are acknowledgement that this is working. It, we're, we're, we're making a difference. Nobody's brought to a board hearing that has not had awful opportunity to either just say, look, we made a mistake. But those that come like this gentleman here, this was just, yeah, this is a situation. We, we're there to protect the public. So now we have to do our due diligence and protect the public. So that's where we're. But Tony, if folks need to talk to you, they need to make comments or give complaints, get clarifications, this is the number. 501 682 9201. 502, pardon me, 501 682 9201. And Tony, I guess I'll, we'll do this again on May the 13th. All righty. Sounds good.